you you said you, he he started in the carnivore. So what did that mean to you? Was it was it dairy? Was it eggs? Was it pork? Was it seafood? Was it everything, or was it just, or did you go very strict, or how did you do that? Yeah, I asked him uh, for kind of a list of what he recommended since we were having to crack my gut at this point. So he said any red meat is fine. I believe he wanted me to limit pork just because pork can be so dirty. Um, he was fine with chicken, some fish, as long as it's wild caught, obviously. Um, sardines, he was okay with. But the biggest thing he made sure to tell me was to add salt. Um, and I didn't understand that because I came from, you know, salt's bad. It's going to make you swell up. I didn't understand that. And now I'm like, hey, does anybody have some salt? Because I need to salt my food. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was mostly mostly meat. He said I could try to introduce dairy. Um, I've never had an issue with it in the past couple years. Um, but specifically, he was recommending like raw milk, local dairy farms if I'm going to get their yogurt. Oh, eggs. I knew I was forgetting something because I have chickens. So he's like, I'm fine with eggs. As long as you know that you tolerate them, go ahead and eat them. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm going to, cause there's, there's a, there's a book on the carnivore diet. I know, I know the guy that wrote it is pretty good. No, I'm just kidding. That's my book, but, um, <laughs> I'm just kind of see how close to people are, are, uh, you know, sticking to what I'd written a few years ago. So it's, it's interesting to see that. Um, and, and as far as, you know, you said you lost about 20 pounds. I mean, how hard was it? I mean, did you, were you hungry all the time or was it, was it pretty satisfying for you? In the beginning, I was pretty hungry. I think just cause I was coming off massive carbs and my body was just saying, Hey, we need those carbs. But once I got over the hump, it was really easy. I mean, I would only eat like maybe twice a day. Now I'm up to three times a day. Now that I'm exercising, I got to have more fuel, but, um, where were we? <laughs> no, at, like how how much how much are you eating and how hard is it to stay full and that type of stuff? A lot oh, of people notice, full. Yeah, a lot of people say satiety is is quite good on the diet. Did you find that to be the case after yes. that use of the carbs? Yes, Being satiety. Gone? Absolutely, yes. Um, it doesn't take much. Like I'll have my steak and I'll add a little bit of ground beef. I heard one girl say, "My ground beef is my brown rice to my to my steak." <laughs> I actually like that. I'm like, you know, that's kind of nice because then it changes the texture around and you feel like you're getting a little bit more with your meal. Yeah. And, and working at a physician's office, you know, uh, and I don't know what the situation is there, maybe not, but a, a lot of times people bring junk in all the time. There's baked goods and donuts and all that stuff, you know, depending on the size of the office. Is that kind of an issue that you have to kind of deal with there or no? Not at the place I'm at currently um and when they do bring things in like his wife will bring things in she'll make it she's made these carnivore um i don't know that you'd call them treats but it's a treat for us basically and she follows uh some very specific recipes because dr cochran does eat carnivore to my knowledge i mean i see him munching on steak and carnivore snacks but at my past job tons of baked goodies i mean there was always candy somewhere within reach that you could you could snag when you're walking by people would bring us donuts like lots of appreciative clients that would bring us baked goods which is hard especially when because i was eating carnivore when i was working there it's hard because you're like oh yeah that tastes good but you get to a point where you're like i know if i eat that i'm gonna feel terrible afterwards yeah. How much, I mean, you know, after going through this, you know, it's kind of weird, you, you know, you, you just sort of look at the world a little differently and you see other people's behavior and how they, you know, they eat all this baked goods that come in and then you, you see later their, their behavior changes, maybe they're tired or something. Like that. Are you able, are you able to notice that now and appreciate more the, the, how crazy it is that we eat all this stuff and think it's normal? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I grew up in the nineties. It was normal to have a can of Coke with your dinner which is terrible. I look back on the diets that we were raised on and I'm like, no wonder I'm sick. We ate a lot of garbage. Although my favorite foods growing up were fruit and steak. I would beg my dad to buy steak. And my dad would say, you know, it's a little too expensive because we've got a family to feed. But the nights that he would barbecue steak, 
were my favorite. So now it's kind of cool because I'm like, I get to have steak all the time. This is great. Yeah, it is kind of funny when we just kind of listen to our bodies and, and you know, they're, they're, it's definitely telling us to eat in many cases to eat steak. I don't mind as in fact, I'm going to have a steak in a couple hours. I'm already thinking about it. So you said initially the transition was, you know, a little challenging. Tell us a little bit about that or any difficulties you've had with this so far. It was really hard in the beginning. Um, I had a few nights where I just cried coming off sugar. I was like, why am I so emotional? This is ridiculous and embarrassing because it's just food you know, when you stop and think about it, you're like, it's just food, but it was such an addiction to eat those things and coming off it, it sparked all these emotions. I swear my hormones were going crazy. Um, I was really tired initially. I don't think I was eating enough because I wasn't used to eating that much protein and fat. Um, and that was the the biggest challenge was making sure I had enough fat because we hunt. So we, we have a lot of game meat, which obviously is very lean. So I had to add in more fat, which that was, that was a challenge and getting used to consuming more fat than we're trained to think, especially, um, when you go from doing like the workouts back in the day, you know, I, my trainer would say, Oh, you got to watch your fat when that probably would have helped me. I probably would have lost more weight and seen more results had I been eating more fat and protein. But that first month was pretty brutal. I feel like by week three, that's when I was telling my mom, because my mom was so worried about this diet. She was very skeptical. And she's like, are you sure you should do this? I mean, you can just stop and just go back. I'm like, no, we're on week three. We're we're counting down because I'm thinking, oh, it's only a month that we have to do this. Have to. And I'm like, no, actually, now I'm starting to feel feel full. I'm not meal prepping like crazy, which takes a lot of time. And now I can just focus on other things. Like food isn't such a big deal anymore versus the way I was eating before. It's like my entire day revolved around food. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people, and you know, we look at the average Americans eating, you know, like six times a day, you know, starting at about 7 a.m. and ending at about 10 p.m. And we're just kind of constantly eating and thinking about our next meal and prepping and shopping. And, you know, it's just, it is, it's a kind of a ongoing, never ending process. And so to simplify it and make it where I only got to eat a couple times a day and I'm good. Um, as far as, you know, you'd mentioned getting enough fat, you know, there's some people that will do this diet in a very high fat fashion, you know, ketogenic. They'll try to get like, 80, 90% of their calories from fat and other people are more moderate. Like myself, I'm, I'm more like 60, maybe 70% some days. Where do you fall on that spectrum? Do you find that you need to eat a lot of fat or are you just kind of just enough to keep you, keep you energized? I feel like I have to have a fair amount of fat. I notice the days that I, I make it a point to eat more. Like if I were to add butter or something to my steak, I notice my energy level comes up versus the days that I don't focus on getting as much fat those are the days that I'm like, okay, I'm dragging just a little bit, not anything like I was before, but I'll have days where I definitely see that improvement. And recently, that's what I was noticing now that I'm exercising more um, and lifting weights. We obviously need more fuel for that. Yeah, absolutely. There's amount of, there's amount of energy, you know, when you're not having carbohydrates in the diet, you know, you're going to, you're going to need some, some fuel somewhere and pr- just protein doesn't quite get it. So um, where do you, you'd mentioned you, you hunt a little bit, you've got, you know, a, a rancher nearby that gives you some cow hearts and things like that. Where, where do you get, do you get a lot of your food from, from different sources? Do you go to the store and get it? Or where do you, where do you get a lot of your meat from? Yeah. My favorite when, when I get out there is Kelso's in Snohomish. I love the butcher out there. Um, their ground beef is really good. Uh, otherwise for, for now I've been getting my steaks at the store. Um, you know, if I get lamb, I try to get grass fed or organic if I can. But when I've talked to my doctor, he said, you know, ideally you would be eating organic grass fed meat. He's like, but at this point I'm okay with you going to Costco and getting a big pack of ribeyes. He's like, that way we just focus on you're eating enough. 